Uh, we are live now, so I do want to welcome you to the Town Council Finance Committee meeting. It is about 4.30 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, May 13th, so everyone welcome. Um, just for the record, uh, all the members of the Town Council Finance Committee are present. So we have several guests and several members and members of our staff. Um, the purpose, just a high-level overview, that today's uh, meeting is going to focus on finalizing our review of the municipal's budget and the changes um, that we discussed at our last meeting. It is also to discuss outside agencies, um, the requests, and then also the school, finalize the school budget, at least from a finance committee's perspective, because we do have a joint workshop this evening at 7 o'clock here in Chambers. Uh, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom for item number one, which is the review of the town budget changes. Great. Uh, we had scheduled this matter for conversation at your last meeting. Time didn't allow, so I thought it would be best just to kind of uh, do a quick recap of the actions. And these are actual uh, formal actions this Finance Committee has taken. So uh, the first page in your packet uh, reflects all of the changes on the MISPA side. Uh, you know, a number of uh, key items in your deliberations and, and that you've decided on. Certainly the page to throw program had effects uh, that have been um, blunted somewhat by other changes you've made along the way. I'm pleased to go through these one by one if you like, uh, but this territory has been covered fairly thoroughly. The end result is that uh, there's a net increase to the budget of $339,306 as a result of the various changes uh, that, that uh, this committee is, will be recommending to the full council. Uh, page two, if I could, I'll, we'll just foreshadow perhaps a, a, a discussion that will occur later. This sheet recognizes, captures uh, what at least Ruth and I are aware in collaboration with our school colleagues, um, changes that, that have come forward uh, on the school side. None of these have been acted on by you as a body. Uh, but they, we believe, reflect kind of the current state of affairs. And um, I would note it also includes a recent good change, which was uh, the removal of the charter school tuition uh, increase is captured here as well. Um, there may be one further change that's not captured here. The one-to-one -one proposal uh, continues to improve in terms of its initial cost. And so there, uh, I should that be successful, there could be some additional changes uh, in that regard as well. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I'm certainly pleased to, to backtrack as much or as little as you like. Uh, um, I thought it, a quick overview might suffice so we can get to the, kind of the meat of the conversation today. Great. Uh, questions from the committee? Or from our, I'm sorry, from our committee. Any questions from Tom? I didn't have a question. I had a, a, a one aspect that I thought was worth raising as a, a modification to the town side of it, and that is, have the uh, fire department personnel be effective April 1, 2016, which would take that figure from 100,000 to 50,000. I look forward in the budget. Yeah, if you look on the, the lower half, the expenditure portion, it's halfway down. It's a hundred thousand dollars increased fire department rescue budget by a hundred thousand. I think the suggestion is that would be fifty. It would be a further delay of the start to April first as opposed to January. Let's talk about one one. No, three months. It's a three month thing. It would be instead of uh, January first, it would be April first. So it has the benefit of, of reducing the budget by $50,000. But has no, I don't think, I think the chief indicated that it was neither here nor there, whether it was January 1 or April 1, so. So um, I think what would be appropriate is for us to, um, so I, I do want to uh, have a recommendation for tonight's workshop for the rest of the council. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and this would be an you, your request would be an amendment to it. So I would go ahead and, and uh, request that uh, move approval of the municipal budget for $17,496,601. Um, and which is on the tax computation sheet for the that I'm coming up with. And that's it's taken into consideration uh, the municipal changes that the manager has already incorporated, correct? Did yes. you say 17546? No, 17496601. Okay. 
That's what it is now. Yeah. That's what it is now, and then any amendments to change that based on cost of volume? No. Would, they, yeah, they ah, would be an amendment to that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're not matching with that number. I just want to make sure. Oh, he found yeah, it. Yeah, oh, okay. Total net budget, yeah. Isn't that what we approved at the first reading? Isn't that about it? Before we approve it at the second reading? Yeah, I just want to make sure I tied in. I was okay. looking at the same number. No, no. I, I'm making the right motion, right, Tom? The right number? Yeah. It's not, it's not the gross. It's the net that I have to move on to the council. Yeah. 17, oh. right? It doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. And then it would be appropriate if you'd like to then. And I would move to amend that uh, uh, motion to second. reduce it by $50,000 uh, uh, addressing a modification to the line item uh, uh, fire department uh, rescue budget, uh, I think is what it says. Uh, change that from $100,000 to $50,000. Second. Any other comments or discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Thank you. Um, I, so I would like to also make a, um, amend, the, amend the motion um, to adjust the budget by use of uh, using the town's fund balance by $224,913, uh, therefore decreasing the net budget by that amount. Is there a second? Second. So um, currently, um, and thank you for this, this has probably been one of the most uh, data-filled uh, finance committees that I've ever worked with, so this has been really wonderful. Uh, so we know that as of 6-30-2014, our fund balance was 6,213,282, which was 8.646%. Uh, per the town council's finance policy uh, regarding fund balance, we are to maintain 8.333%, which would be 5,988,369. The difference between the two is the 224.913. Um, and I think that uh, it would be an appropriate use given the constraints that we're facing Aggregately, it's not just about the town's budget per se, uh, meaning the municipal side, it's also about supporting um, other areas of consideration, and I think that that move would be consistent with our own policy. Uh, questions? Or? Yeah, I guess I would, I would, I'm a little concerned about that, only because I guess maybe an update. Do we think that given the current legislative environment, we're going to see additional shortfalls in funding next year? I mean, if our goal is to stabilize tax rates, we know we took a hit, a million dollars in the school side. I thought there was something on the table that we thought the like municipal side was going to be impacted next year. Governor's proposed budget includes uh, elimination of municipal revenue sharing in the second year of the biennium, which would be fiscal year 17. Uh, that's about a $725,000 hit to the municipal budget. But that is one of many proposals that is that unresolved. Isn't that the one that was, I think, um, Almost unanimously rejected by that's the rumor uh, I hear, Senate but I, Finance Committee. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess my point. So I don't think that's really doesn't sound like it has much chance. Yeah, I guess where I'd be though is I, I think I think funding changes are coming. I'm okay with using some of the reserves there, but I'd also like to keep a little bit aside as a cushion for a rainy day if we have some surprises next year. And additionally, we may need it to smooth out. So I'm okay with a portion of it. So if, we're, if we got what we're talking 224, yeah. 100 or so, 125, I'd like to just keep some of it. Well, see, next year is the the number will be different again. Right, because you'd be basing it off of 2015's performance. Well, right. But, but, mm -hmm. but I guess at this point, do we suspect we're going to generate any type of surplus for this fiscal year we're in? Is that the only thing that's going that's to be generated that, well, that, that would, number? That would be the question. Um, history suggests that we will generate uh, probably a modest one, but we did have a harsh winter. Uh, we did have extra expenses, certainly in public works. Um, it's worth noting, though, and, and I might suggest it's a nuance, but I think an important one, that technically uh, the fund balance be used on the school side, and I have my reasons for that suggestion. It's the same amount. We, 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 and Ruth can certainly, and Kate speak with better than I, uh, part of the reason I suggest that is that uh, there's a, a fairly hefty use of fund balance program budgeted in the current year. I believe it's 800,000. Um, if history suggests anything, and I don't want to speak at all for the school, Kate's certainly capable, um, there are likely to be some monies left over at the end of this fiscal year. It's just too early to tell, and she hasn't had the time to do the year on projections. 
So that this recommendation comes to you with some level of confidence that, that they won't spend everything that's budgeted in the current year that will become fund balance. And so uh, we think uh, we have a degree of comfort in recommending that amount to you. In terms of uh, showing it on the school side, it, I think it slightly helps uh, Ruth and I as we meet with bond rating agencies, um, whereas we have a policy and it's important not to violate that. Some rating, rating agencies would like us to have even higher than 8.3, so it's always a constant struggle, if you will, or conversation. Whereas the school, there's really not that same, in fact, there's an encouragement not to carry fund balance. So it's a bit of a technical nuance, but I think it's better to show the use of fund balance on the school side than the town side. Can you oh, comment on I'm confused by that. Um, what, <coughs> what would you Are like? you comfortable having uh, uh, the use of fund balance? You are carrying a $200,000 fund balance in the present proposed budget, and I think what we're suggesting, Tom suggested, and I think I understand his thinking, that that be increased by $225,000. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, we've had a, and Kate will obviously respond to that directly. And from our finance committee discussions, there's there's two concerns with fund balance, right? It, is it there as a reserve account in case something happens to a facility where, you know, there's a catastrophic need for recovery? If 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 the town and we're all comfortable with using it for that purpose, that's that is completely reasonable and it's understandable. It's all one, one pot of money. Um, we have been using it uh, as a, as, for lack of a better word, as a rainy day fund kind of operation. And my concern from the finance, Kate, I know we'll speak to it more directly, would be that if we take away too much of it now, we're going to really limit our flexibility in the future. I, I know we're not going to take it to zero, but I, I would just be concerned, of, depending on what we intend to use it for and what kind of reserves are, are there, I think that's the basis. But I'm just trying to stall while you get comfortable. <laughs> are, you, are you vamping? I'm sorry. Yeah. We, could, we could yeah. get you yeah. a piano. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm in front of the magic microphone. But uh, to Tom's point, I think that we do have confidence that there will be some level of fund balance generated during the course of this fiscal year. Um, history shows, as Tom said, you have a little chart in there that shows that, uh, the past three years we have allocated $200,000 in fund balance as supporting revenue to the operating budget, and we haven't needed to use that because we've had sufficient savings revenue over expenditure. Yeah, it's um, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I, as Tom said, I haven't had a chance to do a full-on budget actual projection. I always hate to go out on a limb, but this isn't a very, this is a big limb. It's, a, it's okay with me. Um, and I also would, would second what Tom has to say, because the school is actually under statutory authority to keep its fund balance low, whereas the town is actually really um, expected to keep their fund balance higher, it does make sense to have that reflected on the school side. Um, it's, it's kind of an internal accounting where we show that benefit, if you will. It would technically be shown as an additional revenue on the school side of the budget. It's coming from the same fund balance at the end of the day. And, so, and we have so talked around a little bit what happens if we tap that down to the point where we don't have it as a rainy day fund. And, you know, that's something that would be a, of a town-wide concern if we needed to use it for something catastrophic. So does Sean need to modify his motion, or is it a, a matter of once the number is recited, the source from which it comes on a balance sheet uh, does that need to be recited also? The, the source is clear. I think it would be uh, probably appropriate to be clear as to on which side of the budget that revenue appears. Sure. And I recommend it appear on the school side. And I guess Sean would be is maybe table. I would like to be able to get to our recommendation because I think it's, this is just a part of the school sure. recommendation. I mean, I think you need to look oh. at the whole picture. Sure. So I think maybe if we could table it and come back after we get through the school conversation, we'll see if we do then want to, which, where we want to pull it from and why we want to pull it and sure. have that conversation. So let me, um, if you don't mind, indulge me so I can ask some follow-up questions um, based on the information I heard. I'm looking at the document that we were provided with that, start, that states on the top 2014 town and school fund balance. Yes. And I'm looking at page two. Yes. This breaks out both town fund balance and then the school's 
are not aggregated, correct? Well, they're broken. They're, they're shown separately, but they're at the end of the day, they're aggregated. So based upon what I'm reading, it says that on the town side, their fund balance is 224. What's available to be within policy is 224, 913, the basis of my motion. And that's the, the town. Um, down below is the 2016 school additional use of fund balance of 225. Is that the use of that 224? Mm -hmm. Yes. Already? Yeah. Okay. We were, we're showing the effect of that, of that additional use of fund balance. So I'm trying to do the math in my head. So I'm trying to figure out how we got to the 83,790. That is the school fund balance remaining if this um, adjustment passes. The additional 225. Well, that assumes that they spend all 800000 in the current year. And okay. Ruth or Kate just Doesn't think gave you her level happen. of confidence that there'll be something left over. So, uh, so the, okay, so the 800 plus the 425 is the 1.2, and that leaves the 83790 That's right. Out of the million three, that was their ending fund balance. So if they, so the question I have is that, if we don't make this adjustment, what is the net effect to that bottom number if I take that 225 out so I can do this backwards to what their actual balance is? Doesn't it increase the bottom line by, by the 225? Right. So their actual fund balance before this adjustment is 300 and... Three. Yes. 308,000. Plus whatever might come back to the fund balance yep. once the current fiscal year is settled. Uh, I think uh, the chart that's behind there shows you that our ending balance is 508,789 at the end of 2014. So then you take up the 200 that we've already appropriated. Well, not appropriated. The, the two, 200 that we're planning already to put into fiscal 16, right. and you've got 300,000 left. So that 83,790 is if you take more than 200,000 for the school. So the, the way this is represented really is showing it coming off of the school balance. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is coming out of mm -hmm. so that means that if we send um, if we allocate the two twenty four from above, your actual fund balance projected. I'm not tracking the money, I'm sorry. I am getting lost in that because if you have three hundred and eight thousand dollars today <laughs> and we give you two hundred and twenty five, that means your real fund balance is before, and that's after the school's use of 200000 and assuming that you use all of the 800 would be $530,000, right? We're not giving it to them. We're, we're, it's, the, it's technically their balance. The 508000 is technically their balance. Mm -hmm. They're saying they're going to use 200 of them. Yeah. And, and then they're saying they're going to use another 225. 225. So out of that 500000 they're going to use... Four hundred and something, which is going to leave them a the fund balance of eighty-three thousand. Okay. So what happens? That, so uh, what? Uh, sorry, I had to follow that through. So what happens with the two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that the town has between its gap policy versus where it is today? I think the trouble is that that's town and school combined. Yeah. You're you're, you're arriving at two twenty-four nine thirteen at the top. If you go back to your first page. Town and if you look at the very, very top, it shows total fund balance as of June 30th to be 9608 right. That includes all of the school yep. and the town. But if you look on page two, the amount at the top does not include the school. So the gap in the policy is still based upon the town's fund balance. Yeah. Um, the amount on the top does include the It does. It does include the school. So the because 2, 13, 282 is the combined... Um, bank account balance, if you will, of school and town. So, so I'm looking at the 9.6 million, which is yes. so. The question is, yeah. 9.6 million is shown on the first page, and 6.2 million is shown on the second. Well, if you look on the first page, the next line down yep. shows, pursuant to our policy, that is how you calculate fund balance, and so the 6.2 okay. million is shown there. And that's why that's the number that's used. And the difference between the audited amount of above and then that amount is because it's restricted? Because and you can't use it? Right. right. And, okay. and the policy, the, the fund balance policy tells us what we can or can't. Yeah, and you have to exclude that from any kind of right. Right. So that percentage calculation has to be pursuant to how you define it in the policy, and it is here. Okay. So the question that I have regarding the motion is, um, 
do we need to make the motion to adjust the town's budget for the use of that fund balance and then have that taken into consideration on the, on the school's budget? So we would want to increase the net budget on the town side Correct. and then reduce it on the school side. Correct. If I, am I thinking that through correctly? So my motion for the 224-913, even though it's uh, not what I originally intended, seems to at least be appropriate to be consistent with the presentation of the <coughs> using that fund balance. Correct. Did you follow that, Ruth? <laughs> I, I believe. You're not following. I need these two to follow it I'm more than. Why, why, don't we, why don't we just put it in layman's terms? What would you like to do? <laughs> I want to make sure that we have no more than 5.988 million dollars in our fund balance. This is consistent with our policy. We use those funds um, for the entire budget, uh, whether it's um, taken out of the municipal side um, or transferred over to the schools. Does not matter to me how that accounting process is. I think that it, for consistency purposes, when we're talking about level services budget, we need to talk about level service or level policy um, changes as well. And this is a level change for our policy. So, how that gets into the final budget is that okay? Is that term yeah. enough? Okay. So, um, I hate to ask, how should I? Is my motion still? It's clear to me, but clear. more importantly, it needs to be clear you, to your colleagues. Yeah. It, it, what you're saying is uh, your motion seeks to have $224,913 added to the revenue side of the budget. Of, yeah. the, of the budget. Yes. Uh, Therefore, decreasing the net budget by that same amount. And, right. 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 Uh, and, and that those dollars are to be allocated to the school. Well, when we get to the school budget, that's, uh, I would expect that we would have that conversation and make the adjustment to their budget and the recognition of it. Okay. So if I uh, just she wants to account for it under GAS uh, <laughs> or GASB is um, her responsibility. So I'm thinking that the net budget for the town should now be seventeen million seven twenty one six zero one less than fifty thousand. What? Why would it increase? Wouldn't it decrease because it's increase in revenue? We're decreasing our revenues because I originally put it in the town's revenue, and what we're saying is we want it to be in the school. Oh, so you did add it in our right. It's already okay. in my ah, Yeah, I think okay. that because it is, our, um, I think it would be clearer if we do it. It needs to be adjusted within the municipal budget because it's a municipal fund. Uh, I don't think it needs to be. Um, uh, that's, that's your policy decision. I suggest it be shown as revenue on the school side. Because our actual fund policy, fund balance policy says once we reach more than 10 percent, then right. we can use it for other things. Capital. So technically we're not at 10 percent yet. Right. So that's the... No, I knew that. Yeah. The rub, but that's, that's the explainable. And, and I guess where I still am, John, John, I'm not comfortable with is taking the total town reserve down to the benchmark. If I'm reading this right, there's a $225,000 cushion. I'm worried about a rainy day fund. I'm worried about the bond rate and some other things. I'm uncomfortable clearing our decks and investing every bit of the surplus that we do have to follow our policy this year. I'm okay with taking a portion of it. I'm not comfortable taking the whole thing. That kind of circles back to the conversation. Because I believe we're going to need it for a rainy day at some point. Um, I think the history of this has been that we have been below the 8.3% benchmark for a number of years and have actually come back and reached it uh, and exceeded it yes. uh, with the present state of our uh, fund balance. So this, there is a history of using it in difficult times. Uh, in the 2010-2011 time frame, we drew it down to a more significant degree because of recessionary conditions. 8.3 uh, is a benchmark that we're not required to uh, keep, in other words. Uh, but it is a benchmark that is consistent with uh, accounting practices that the bond agency looks to, and as Tom said, the bond agency actually would like to see it be 
higher, but there's a realistic limit on what we uh, uh, ought to be uh, ought to be keeping in the way of taxpayer funds. I mean, you have to say to yourself, what's what's the degree of risk that's going on here that would cause us to continue to keep more and more taxpayer funds? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm at once uh, uh, unhappy or uncomfortable with using fund balance where you know it can't repeat itself year to year. That that. That, think, con that concerns me. And I think but that there, I mean, with the uncertainty of what's happened in the legislature, I would be willing to bet that there will be some additional impact next year. So I'm, I'm not sure it's at all certain that we can. I mean, I, I'd be happy with half of it, but I, I think the reason I propose going to the school budget is I think there may be other places that we can look to to find funds or relief to the budget before we tap into reserves. I mean, I, so that's just, you know, you guys know where I am, so that's, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable using that all. Okay, I know I, I'm already, I'm okay with it, yeah. So, um, just, um, as a, so I, I'm comfortable with this having seen um, the performance of the town in the past, uh, and the reason is I believe in the 2014, um, the excess revenues that we received, or I should say the excess net revenues that we received was approximately $700,000, I think, that was able to go into the fund balance. So I do think that um, while we might have had a tough summer, the general practices of the town haven't significantly changed, and I think that we're going to see some fund balance added to that. And if necessary, next year, if we need to um, dig deeper into that balance um, in order to smooth it out, I'm willing to go below that. I hope we don't have to. Um, personally, I hope the legislature um, changes its direction and uh, we won't even need to deal with that, but we'll wait and see what happens at that particular point. So um, I'm going to ask that we vote on this motion, and if it fails, then I'd be happy to then um, uh, make a recommendation to uh, move approval of what you recommended, which is the half mark, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, any other comments or questions from the manager? Can you repeat the amendment just one more time? Sorry. Yeah, it's to, um, I guess it would, um, so I want to rephrase it actually because I believe um, I was thinking it in direct, uh, incorrectly. That would actually be an increase in expenditures of 224,913, correct? Yes. Because we're going to then allocate it and send it over to the school department. I'm not really no. seeing where that impact no, it, is it, on the municipal it's side. It's not an expenditure, it's a revenue only. Which goes to reduce the net need. So Ruth had mentioned that her new total was seventeen thousand seven hundred and change. To get there, it had to be an expenditure to increase the budget. Well, it's a, well, it's a reduction in revenues which increases the net budget. Okay, so I think the confusion is the 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 comp sheet you're looking at. I I guess I took some liberties. I included, I assume this fund use of fund balance in this calculation. So it's already there, shown on the town side. So when you start quoting numbers from this sheet, um, if, if you just, in layman's terms, explain what you want to do. These are, these are meaningless other than a reference point. You've not taken any action. They were so models that so we developed. The 224 and change is already in the revenue side on this sheet. On this Correct. projection, okay. yes, which, right. which is there as a reference point. It's, um, but that's right, the motion is still appropriate to no. increase revenue. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask if you don't mind whether we are in the motion. Okay. And the reason is because when we made the motion for the 17496601, it already included the adjustment. You're right. So I apologize for the confusion no, and delay. Right. Was a second. No, that's mine. I should have mentioned that no, that was apologize. already in there. Okay. We follow that. When I made the motion for the I, I hear you. Motion, it already included the, the use of that. I think it's to let the motion to go through because we, we're still making the decision to use those fund balances, right? On the town side. Yep. Yeah. Something we haven't talked about, so I just... No, so by withdrawing it, now we're going to talk about it because it's already included in the number. You've, you've, not, in, you've not taken action on the use right. of that. For purposes of running this model, I assume that you would. Yeah. Forgive me for doing that, no. but so we still have to vote on that. you still have to vote. So now, so the main motion. So it's back to your motion. Now. Yeah. So the, the motion on the floor now mm -hmm. is to uh, consider seventeen thousand four hundred and forty-six dollars and six hundred and one. Sorry, 
17 million is four. Well, it's minus the 50 because the 50 passed. Oh, yes, right. So it's back to the, the main motion, which is it takes into consideration the adjustment that's been made. The, the number that I quoted included that adjustment. So now it's the time to talk about that adjustment further. If you want. To move it to the school side, you mean? Yes. Well, I mean, it's part, yes, yeah, but we can, yeah. What's up? I guess what I'm asking for is a vote to accept. If we take a vote to accept that number you just quoted, 17 4, yep. that, that assumes you're taking a vote on using the reserve. Correct. And I'm not comfortable with that, so I'd like to take a vote so I can register that I'm not comfortable with that. Okay. So what we'll do is, um, well. Do I make an amendment? Wait. Sean, okay. Yeah, so, you, so the amendment, uh, sorry, the amendment is then you should um, make a motion, and I'll be happy to second it, is to actually uh, remove the two hundred twenty-four nine or the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay, make it Fr from the from the primary motion, yeah. yeah. and I'll second that. That's fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, now that's fine. Okay. I so comments. I just this this is not necessary from my point of view. Th these are simply models that Ruth and I prepared yep. that are not based on any action you've taken. Yep. So, if you wish to quote specific numbers, we'll give you those numbers. But you don't need to take any action to reverse anything because you haven't done anything. Well, I have. I've made a motion, made Tom, a motion. and the motion was to accept that number that's in here. So, in order to meet Peter's needs, we need to add. Actually, his motion is to withdraw and remove the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Because okay. there is a motion on the floor that was actually seconded. So, okay. Did you second it? Yes, I did. For the, yes. So, did you want to add any additional no. comments? Any comments? For this? No. Sorry for the confusion, but it's because the motion was made and seconded. So that's the action that we're taking to be then forward onto the council for this budget. Um, if there's no other comments amongst the council, um, all in favor of removing the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars? One. All opposed? Two. Uh, back to the main motion, which was uh, uh, as amended, which is $17,446,601. Uh, $17, right, Ruth? Mm -hmm. uh, any additional adjustments or requests? The council? No. Not seeing any. Um, uh, move approval. Or those, uh, those in favor? Two. And those opposed? One. So we'll be uh, recommending to the town council a total budget on the municipal side, a net of $17,446,601. Uh, that is, uh, we'll have to um, actually, for the purposes of just informing people, we'll um, have to calculate the uh, actual mill rate for the town budget. Um, I can't imagine $50,000 having a significant, right now it was 0.41, so it might go down to 0.4. Or, oh, I, don't, I can't imagine. So, thank you for that. Uh, um, moving on now to outside agency requests to uh, finalize the recommendations. Um, based upon that budget, if there's no uh, no other comments, I believe that it basically accepts the recommendation of the manager, which was to eliminate um, most of those outside agencies except for was it fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, which was Project Grace, uh, land trust. The land trust. And yeah, totally I think there was a contingency of 700. I wouldn't even consider that yeah. as part of it. Do you, do you guys feel that there's any need for additional comment at this level, or we can transfer the conversation to the council? I I thought that I would benefit from uh, hearing what more experienced council members have to say about uh, this. Uh, and so, uh, resolving this at the uh, town council meeting on the 20, 20th of yeah. May seemed like an appropriate <coughs> thing to do, and I'm happy to have it sit just the way it is at the present time. Peter? Hey, I mean, the only question is why, what's our rationale for, I mean, we took a $60,000 budget, reduced it to fourteen seven. Um, just curious why we've selected the agencies we, have, we do have. Is that a appropriate conversation here or defer to the, to the meeting? It yeah, certainly is partly in the, uh, in the meeting I, uh, because I don't have enough information on 
any of the agencies other than uh, Project Grace, which I know has been a cornerstone uh, of the support for the Scarborough community, and therefore has sort of achieved a certain special status. So your proposal bill is to defer it to the full council. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I'm happy with that. I mean, I've, um, I've seen that uh, that particular budget line go up and down and fluctuate over time. Um, and I agree that um, it needs better scrutiny in the sense of why some agencies. Um, I do take into consideration the manager's comments around project areas, particularly because we generally would see or probably would see an increase in general assistance requirements as a result of what they provide. So I think that it's appropriate. But at the same time, let's not forget that we did ask the uh, chair of the Rules and Policy Committee uh, to take this up as consideration as well so that we have a more solid policy about uh, not only the application process, but uh, its appropriateness and how it should be managed going forward. So hopefully that will be a further development as well. Um, next is our uh, school budget, uh, finalizing our recommendations for the school. So uh, to our friends from the school board and the school department, thanks for indulging us for the last uh, half an hour um, while we dealt with that side of it. So. Um, before we get into our kind of deliberations or considerations, um, I'm going to go to the rest of the uh, finance committee members if they have any questions, further questions for the school board, um, whether it's uh, fact or data that's needed in the deliberation. Uh, you're welcome to uh, ask those questions now. Okay. Yes, I, just, I just have a quick question on page 29 of, of this manual. You guys have the same thing, but it, all I'm referencing is there's an at two asterisks in here about the MSMLTI program, and it's a seventy-five thousand dollar lease. But in the footnotes, you have currently in capital improvement, prefer to move into operating budget. I don't think we've ever talked about that. I'm just wondering. That was the comment. That was the recommendation. I'm just wondering if that is that still the thought, and talk a little bit about. That where it belongs in CIP or operation? Yeah, that is still the thought because it's an ongoing lease payment and it's been part of the conversations that we've had around um, you know, what belongs in CIP when it comes to technology. Is it an operating cost or is it really a project? And uh, in the course of that conversation, we identified that a portion of our CIP budget for the past several years has been allocated to that lease payment. And if we are able to retain the $115,000 in our operating budget, that is what we call a reconciliation, that's a placeholder for us in technology moving forward to be able to pay for that and other things that belong in operating out of the operating budget. So if we are able to retain that $115,000 on the operating side, then we would not need to spend that on the capital side. And it would simply be a project that we don't follow through with. We would not request the $75,000 in two places. However, it is in both budgets because we're not sure whether that $115,000 is going to be palatable and is going to survive. Okay. Follow up? Need time to think? <laughs> no, I'm, I just, so you've, you've got a placeholder in the normal budget for that $75,000? Yes. 115 total for several items, including the 75,000. Okay. Then I suggest taking out CIP and move it over to operation. But you're saying it's already in operation. It is in operation. So it's in both places right now. It's in both places right now. The reason that it's, that it's in, <laughs> yeah, we really only need it one time. Um, the reason that it's in CIP is that there are often occasions when we have a budget amount approved in CIP and we don't follow through with that exact amount, whereas we're sort of more strictly regulated on the operating side. Um, if a CIP budget item should not be required for whatever reason, um, the project's delayed or what have you, then those monies would simply not be requested, not be bonded. So we have a little more flexibility on that side. And how much was that again? 75,000 in the CIP. Is that all under technology? Is it these three here or is it? You can see it on page 24 of their There's budget. There's a detail sheet, yeah, right before that. Is sheet. it the 75, the 15, and the 25? Um, eight. The 75, not the 15, and the 25. Those are others. Uh, so it's just the MLTI program? The MLTI. Well, I, was just, uh, I found it in the CIP. So on page 24 of their budget, which is the CIP portion, 
I believe you'll see the MLTI annual lease for sixth grade devices. Yes. And it sounds like a similar amount is shown in the uh, No, I'm sorry, this is all in capital, right? Yeah, you're looking at capital. 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 If you if you wanted to look at it for it in the operating budget, it would be under technology equipment and it would be uh, in the MIS or IT section of the operating budget. It's a line that has increased from sixteen thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars to uh, 115000 and that is the amount that we landed with for MLTI and a couple of other things connected with the uh, high school one to one. Could you point our attention to which page in the operating budget? Come look at I can come look over your shoulder. This is trying to share with you, but I think the book is on your side. Okay. IT equipment purchases. So for you folks, it says page 13 of 32 in the school section. It's under tab, where am I, tab 8. And it's at the bottom of the page. There's a chunk called instructional technology, one of our budget categories, and it's the last line in that. So you're saying uh, there's 75,000 in here that's also in capital. Correct. But just the 75. Just the 75. Okay. Sorry. That was my question. So, um, Luke, question? If you don't mind, um, or maybe uh, Tom, both of you. Mm -hmm. Looking at, um, again, I think it was the first handout which said the top says finance committee motion approved on April 29th. I think it's the fourth page in. Mm -hmm. the third. Yeah, the fourth page in is the school tax rate computation. Just before I get too far ahead <laughs> and we don't uh, get too confused like the last one, um, this takes into consideration the $225,000 adjustment from the uh, use of uh, uh, or the transfer of our fund balance from the town side to the schools, correct? No. No. This does not. And number two I have is that under the capital improvement projects it reads $1.413 million. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question I have is that based upon this conversation around the $75,000, would that then be decreased by the $75,000? Because yes, you're taking it up. If your preference is to fund to operating, okay. yes, that number would well, change. So one of the things I do want to kind of this, this could become complicated because, <coughs> excuse me, the, the council and particularly the finance committee as well, um, on the school side, we have to look at the net appropriation, the net budget, and really not, um, while we can use examples of, of where they can take consideration, and hopefully they take notes and meet some of those, is that they can decide to make whatever adjustments. I mean, they're empowered and authorized to do that on behalf of the town. So just keep in mind that while we are focusing on particular items, they may come back and say, we found a different place to make those adjustments. And that's a fair statement about the process. Is that correct? But I think it's fair for us to ask that it should only be in one place. No, no, I agree. <laughs> it's, in, it's in two places now in the budget. So they, I agree that they need to decide where it belongs. But, but right now we've got a placeholder in two places. Mm -hmm. No, I, to I totally agree with the adjustment or the change. That I'm just acknowledging that we're um, looking at it from a net perspective. They then are responsible for that making that adjustment. I think to uh, just to give you some context, if the school budget on the operating side is reduced by the council and we have a new bottom line, um, it's my impression that it's fairly very likely that that $115,000 for tech equipment wouldn't survive in the operating budget because it would be one place that's brand new that we haven't had before. It's not base expenditures. It's not critically important because we have generally funded those things in CIP. So it's one of those, I won't say nice to have, but a, a more appropriate fiscal policy which tells me that if it is now removed from CIP and later we feel we need to remove it from operating, then we haven't got it at all. So the CIP is a fallback position for but I guess we're troubled by a CIP item is on the fallback position. It is either a capital improvement item or it's not. I mean at least at least in the in all the accounting world I was thinking it's either a capital <laughs> item that's depreciable or it's not. And, and I think what I heard you reading is you're saying because it's an annual or it's a lease. We would I, I'm not sure. Have it in the operating. That's what I thought you were saying. So that's that's that is so if, if the proper place is for it to be in the operating budget, that's where it should be, and then we can then talk about what the rest of the budget adjustments are or not. Needs to be parked in the right place. Let's find out where it belongs, and then. 
Yeah, if I could, but if I can make a point, I mean, just because it's in CIP, it doesn't mean we have to use it. It's not, we're not obligated to, to, if we have it in two places and it survives the operating budget, then we don't use it in CIP. We're not double dipping there. It's, 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 a, it's a reserve in case we do take it out of operational budget. We have the opportunity to make that investment on the capital side of things. If we use it in the operation and it survives, we don't use it on the capital side. But, but I think the problem is what the constituents are voting on. They're authorizing both expenditures. If it's in the operating budget, they're authorizing the operating budget. If it's in the capital improvement budget, they're authorizing that also. Um, so again, you've got to, just from a, from a technical point of view, you've got to, it seems our job is to make sure the budgets accurately reflect, to have something in two places. Just doesn't seem, you've got to be in one place or the other. Can't, you can't, you can't have a placeholder in both. That's kind of, at least that's just my opinion. That's what I'm trying to say. That you, they're approving both sides. Um, Bill? Uh, well, it just sounds like from Kate's comments is that it's really just been done to sort of hedge bets uh, against it, its loss in the operating budget. I, I think if we look historically, we've put over the past three or four years a technology <coughs> component into the operating budget and then at the 11th hour, the budget has been cut down, and you know, for whatever reason, we've chosen not to remove existing programs, not to cut back on investments that are needed, but to rather keep those expenses in CIP where they have historically been. So that's why I have some doubts about whether that $115,000 is going to be there for us in the end. So, um Um, the balance that I have in this is twofold. First is I agree with Peter's notion that um, um, it's either a CIP or it's in the operating budget. Uh, budget. I do agree based on the conversation that, and it sounds like you do too, that it's better to be in the operational budget. However, um, uh, not to aggressively disagree, but I don't believe um, that it is the town council or this finance committee's responsibility to be the fiscal stewards to make sure that the school board's accounting and their budget detail is um, um, as detailed as what you're suggesting. And the reason is that's what the school board is, is charged with. It's their responsibility. It's their finance committee's responsibility. That's why our charter and state law says that our responsibility is the net budget amounts. Um, we can make those recommendations to them and hope that they listen to those and then follow through with that. And I believe that they will. Uh, to the best of their ability. So um, I agree with uh, the conversation. I agree with the adjustment. I just don't want us to get into the nuances of, well, it must absolutely happen because we don't have that authority to tell them that they do that. So I would actually, once we get into the motion, if there is a motion to adjust the, um, the net budget of the school by the $75,000, they can decide, or they're charged in deciding, does it come out of operations or does it come out of the CIP? And 115, not 75, am I right? 75. It was 75. 75. 75 is the value that is in CIP and... Oh, wait, yeah. I was looking at the line item, technology renewal and replacement, 115. It, it includes more items than just items that's left Okay, I got you. Thank you. And, and those who have seen the budget um, since I've been here have seen reconciliations where, I, I, you know, we, and Kate has stated, you know, we want things in the right compartment, but it's hard to do that when historically they've not necessarily been in the right compartment. And when um, m when making or committing to the reconciliation um, means that uh, that we cut further uh, in terms of uh, educational programs, because there's been there's been no fluff or no uh, uh, no windfall to play with there. I think we've. We've um, approached this um, with integrity in terms of identifying those areas that we've, we felt needed to be um, appropriately reflected in the operating budget. Well, if it, belong, if it, it seems most appropriate to have it be in the operating budget, then it should be in the operating budget. And it, and it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't really need to. so um, that the question is, <coughs> at what point in the process 
is the uh, CIP budget for, for this item approved on May 20th? Yes. It was approved in the first reading. It's part of our approval. Part of their net budget. It's taken into consideration. Right. It's actually a separate budget all to itself. Um, that's how you approve it in first reading, and you'll consider it in second reading. The capital budget? Yes. So I think we do have some accountability by approving both of them before approving yeah. I would agree. There's no reason that you should be approving, but giving budget authority for the same item twice. In the, in the first reading, it says, it says, be it further ordered, this council, blah, 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 school purposes, operating, adult ed, food services, and school debt is one number. And then further down, it does say, um, be it further ordered, this council hereby appropriates for capital purposes, and it goes into the two town ones and then the school's capitals in growth. So they're being approved in two separate places. So uh, given the conversation, when we do get into motions, what I would recommend is that um, we can actually split the request into two. One is the operating budget, um, and one is the, or the net operating budget. The other is the capital improvements, is, I think would be the clearest way to take that. That way you can take into consideration what we just talked about. Exactly. You follow that, too? When it, when it comes to the second reading and both? Um, for the finance the committee's budget. recommendation to the full council, yeah. and then because that's how it's presented to the town as well. And then it's, it's, there are two actions being taken. Correct. If the operating budget action is taken first, then the... Well, actually, the way that it's, it's actually one reading and one motion is the way that it's set up. Is that correct, Tom, I believe? Well, there's multiple parts. But there's parts. So um, what I'm suggesting here for the recommendation to the town council is that we'll take them up separately, but they will be then combined back again for the purposes of the town council's second reading. The motion to say so recommend leaving it in the operational budget yes. and taking it out of the capital budget. Sure. So uh, at this point, we had actually only started asking questions, so there wasn't a mo there's no motion on the floor to accept anything yet. But it would be appropriate when we then get to that. Okay. Um, before we get into that kind of level, uh, any other questions regarding the budget, uh, school department's budget that you'd like to ask of the school uh, board and. Well, I, I, I appreciated the materials that Kate sent because I was concerned about understanding the special ed uh, uh, pressures that the school department was under. And I thought that uh, helped to clarify for me, since I've been taking a bit of a um, level services outlook simply because we asked the town manager to do it. We as town councilors had as a goal uh, a, a very predictable and, and uh, phrased very much in terms of level services, and we passed over a lot of um, advancements that could have been made in the uh, uh, on the municipal side. Uh, I feel as if the uh, school and the town are in this together. We're, we're both trying to. Uh, uh, arrive at the best possible outcome, and so I thought that a level services budget on the on the uh, school side uh, would be appropriate. But as I was digging, and I shared with both of you the the things that I thought were necessary to carry on the programs uh, that we have uh, advanced, uh, and we have a special ed uh, uh, program that. Uh, I think requires us to have 2.1 FTEs as appears in the budget. Uh, and based on Kate's uh, note to all of us, that there is an additional $57,000 that was identified as a part of that. Tom's email did the arithmetic uh, mm -hmm. for that. Uh, and the uh, uh, one on one computing uh, tech support person uh, was the one other additional piece. Uh, so I'm prepared to accept that as an appropriate place to uh, adjust the budget from the bottom line. It would include those items that I just mentioned uh, that uh, fall primarily under the line of uh, EIP, the Education Improvement Plan. That's where most of them are. Uh, obviously, debt service is, uh, uh, is 
the fixed number, the total base expenditure, which is conceptually uh, level services. It's been described as level services. Uh, those are the items that uh, that I would be uh, ready to endorse. And Tom did the arithmetic to show that it, that would mean that the total uh, budget would be reduced by $90,092 as presented to us at the present time under the column uh, fiscal year 2016 finance committee's proposal at school finance committee's proposal as of 5-7-2015. So that's, so that's sort of the, the thinking that I've been doing over the last several weeks to try and arrive at what I thought was fair uh, uh, to be consistent with the town and consistent with what the town council was directing uh, the town to do, the town manager to do, and who, which I think the town manager successfully did. Tom, is well, I, I just wanted to give you a suggestion when you're ready to make motions, so I don't want to stop here. Yeah, questions. so I think that with uh, the comments that are made, I think it would be best if we actually put a motion on the floor so that we can then have the uh, conversations that we're having now become amendments or motions. So I'm with that. Uh, yes, one, one question. And, and actually, it's something that, Bill, I think you asked for and Kate responded, and it's really talking about the increase in <coughs> services. And in, in your, at the very bottom where you Last paragraph, you talk about the, the increases in programs have been 10 to 44 percent, the 44 percent of the fee. So what we have increased the budget from 299 to 448, which is a, about a 49 percent increase. So of that range of 10 to 49, you've kind of chosen 50 percent as the increase. I'm just wondering. How did we get there? Well, it's just a wide range. I mean, if you chose uh, 10, it would be a different number. If you chose 49, it's sure. a different number. Um, it's really actually based on individual placements of actual children who are currently yeah. in special purpose private schools. Yeah. So the range of increase is based on the different schools and what their rates are. It's a daily mm -hmm. rate. So what we've done is, I mean, that was just to give you an idea of the, the, range, yeah. the uh, an enormity of some of these cost increases. We have a couple of kids who are at the much more highly priced. So these um, are based on actual rates that you know? These are based on students who are either already placed okay. in a school, and we kind of know that the, the tuition for that kid right. at that school is going to be a certain amount. So this really is uh, an estimate. This is really based on it's, the it's pretty accurate. In fact, I think, unfortunately, it's probably going to be a little low because some of the kindergarten folks that are coming in, um, we're still working on, on where they're going to belong. But there's there's some pretty um, significant placements that are already there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, and Tom, I'm going to look for you so that we don't get too complicated. So I'm going to split. If I did my math properly, I'm going to split this um, based on our prior comments. So, I'm, uh, I would move approval that uh, we approve a um, school budget that excludes the capital improvement projects. Um, and it's aggregate as well as it's net, because we'll have that as a separate motion. But if, if I calculate it right, it would be $39,172,589. Is Could I stop you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just to try, try to unravel this before no, we absolutely. get to it. Through the course of your weeks of deliberation, a number of changes have come to you um, from the school board, uh, just as their numbers get better. You as a body have not technically accepted or adopted any of those. So I'm, I would suggest to get you to a point, which I believe the, the school representatives would agree with, we have prepared and captured all of those changes on page two. Now, I will warn you this does include some operating, some capital, but simply a motion to pass this gives us proper direction. We know where to make those changes from. So. Uh, that would be my recommendation as a starting point, and then you can certainly go further from there. So just to explain where I was going to go, um, okay. is that actually uh, understanding this direction here? I was actually going to ask that we, um, as a separate motion outside of this, is to pass this because it's a line item detail. It gives direction for the total. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of where, because I kind of understood what that, 
that summary sheet was. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my concern is I want to make sure you take yeah. formal action to I, I, accept I, I, these and we don't lose sight of that because you haven't yet. And then you're free to. No, on the school side. On the school side, okay. So this will be taken up, it will be taken up tonight to pass the recommended and forwarded to the council as part of the total recommendation Good. so that they can see the detail that Good. went I into the that number. I want to make sure Absolutely. you didn't lose sight of that. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, Lee will verify is my number, my handwritten math. Yeah. Right, so I have move approval of a school budget of 39172589 which is less, that basically it is the number in front of you less the net CIP because we'll take that up as a separate motion. Okay? No, sure. CIP's not. I've taken it out. It's not. CIP. I'm taking this minus this. Okay. Did I do that right, Tom? You take it out. So Ida Kaplan approves you took the 75, like so. Not yet. That's going to be the next conversation after. The, this is about every other, um, the other four items that are in the school budget. So educational net, it is adult learning net, and food services net. Okay, can you just, I see the number 39523317. I see that number. Yep. And I subtracted the net of 348728 because we're going to talk about that separate, which includes both the gross and then the revenues. You, you could certainly be this precise if you like. From my perspective, I don't think. No, no, I, I want to uh, make sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Is there a second? Yeah, it's okay. So um, this is everything other than uh, again the capital improvements. So I just want to lead off uh, first in saying, um, finally getting to this point of approving the budget, I want to extend uh, my appreciation to the finance committee of the school board, as well as the school board members and the staff. Um, absolutely an incredible process that I think has been extremely knowledgeable even over the number of years that I've been involved. Uh, and even the time I served on the school board, I think I know more about the budget today than I had in the past. Um, so I do really appreciate the work that we've been able to do together as part of that. Um, to um, to um, Bill's original comment, and he'll need to make a motion to reduce that amount by $90,092. Um, I'll preempt that by saying that um, I am concerned by that. Um, even though, take this into consideration, $90,000 in a $40 million budget is really a very small amount. So it's more about principle and it's about um, um, consistency across the board. And so uh, while I respect that um, Bill's comment about that adjustment as valid, um, I then look at the town and the fact is that we have added items that are not level services, including two, even though it's half year or, or three months, four months in, we have added to their level services budget that was already presented based upon a need. And so um, I take it into consideration that this is just simply um, a very small amount First of all, secondarily is that it's not, adjusting it is not consistent with what we did on the town side. And second is that um, I'm actually comfortable, I mean, this is going to the full council first and then to the, onto the community for their vote. So I think that uh, while we have a lot of work to do in our conversations with the full council, um, it's, it's going to be up to the citizens that decide whether or not this is an appropriate budget. And I don't think $90,000 is, is going to be the deciding factor between an approval or even a rejection if the vote is to be rejected. It's going to be, you know, um, I think significantly, the argument will be significantly different. So, did you want to make a motion or, or regarding the $90,000? Yeah, I, I would like to do it because. Is it, uh, I think your motion is still pending though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have Well, it's an amendment. This would be an amendment. Amend. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Be an, an amend, uh, which is, well, it's obvious that it is a I, I totally agree in that the budget it dwarfs it so that it, uh, but it is a matter of principle that uh, we as a council were holding the town manager to a certain standard uh, and therefore I feel like that we're all in this together, we've worked hard to get to where we are uh, and uh, so it represents uh, a sacrifice in a, in a fashion for the, the school. Uh, when I look at the 
inclusion in the level services budget of the municipality a uh, addition of uh, two firemen, I perceive that as uh, a public safety issue created by the loss of volunteer firemen and that we've had a dramatic reduction in the number of volunteer firemen and therefore uh, when uh, uh, Chief Thurlow spoke to us, he talked about something that kept him up at night. And I think those are the kinds of things that there are certain things that are uh, important to maintain, in the, in whether it's the level of education, whether it's the level of public safety. Uh, and I thought that fell into my concept of level services, because that is you're trying to continue to maintain a certain level of service. Uh, and so that's why I thought that was considered. Uh, I would make a, a motion to amend uh, the number uh, by $90,092. Second. Peter? Well, and I guess I'd be, well, let's finish that motion first. So. Yeah, any comments on, on his request? No, I mean, I'm fine. Okay. Um, not having any, any uh, so I do want to make sure I want to uh, round back to Tom. Uh, in the school's uh, computation sheet, which is what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. there were no adjustments to their um, growth. So this, I want to make sure we're not double taking out. But there was some, uh, there was some uh, on the town side. There was some adjustments already made based on some questions. You, want, you know what I'm talking about? The tax rate comp page takes into account. Everything just shown the, on page just two. the 225. Everything shown on page two. Well, everything shown on page two. Okay. Except for the CIP, because you're going to you do just that. Right, that's going to be separate. Um, so, so everything on the CIP, uh, everything on page two. So I just want to make sure. Does that include the 225 uh, from the previous? So that will have to be a separate. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Um, all in favor of adjusting their budget, uh, the school's budget, by $90,092. All in favor? Opposed? And two to one. And I guess I'd, I'd make a further amendment. Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, I think in looking at, and based on some of the conversations, as I look at it, I mean, historically, the school budget in the last three years has generated a surplus, as we have already talked about, about 250000 I actually think there's probably in this budget, this calendar year, the 250 or so. I think they already talked about possibly generating a surplus for this year as it's looking in that range of magnitude. So I'm actually thinking that there's a much larger adjustment here. And I think there's an adjustment in the order to about $500,000, which is the motion that I'd like to make. And, that, and that's, that's assuming that we use those surpluses that they've historically generated and apply it to this year's budget. And I'll second for purposes of discussion. Absolutely. Um, uh, my, my, my comment is that, that that delves into an area of conjecture. I see your point. I understand what you're saying, that there's likely to be some fund balance uh, money is available at the end of the fiscal year, <clears throat> uh, uh, but when you, when you, to me that has an arbitrariness that I'd be uncomfortable with uh, because I can't really say as things get tighter and tighter, budgets get tighter and tighter, whether that actually would come to pass or in the amount that the motion suggests. So I think I'd probably vote no. I guess my issue would be whether it's those specific items. I mean, I've got a list of things, specific line items that we won't discuss, but I can't support a 9.27%. I don't think we've done our job as a committee, as a finance group. I don't think we've, we've lived consistently the goals we set as a council and finance committee to pass on a budget of a 9.27% increase. So I support your amendment. So that, that's the place I am. I think we're. I, I, I'm uncomfortable passing this on as it is without further recommendations. So, uh, uh, no, you haven't had a turn chance. Oh, that, oh, no. uh, it would be helpful to, under, to understand where we are with uh, the um, 
cost increase year over year for the uh, school budget? I would. Um, I don't know if we if we have that. We did have it. I think is this uh, what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. This compares yep. current year to proposed. Okay. This is what we're given by the town by Tom. And over the last since 2011, including next year, it's a, it has been a 40% increase from 2011 to proposed next year. And Kate, uh, can you tell me what the revenue of the uh, ex expenditure increase is? Uh, for the proposed budget over the 2015? That's the 4.51 that you see in that right. yellow stripe there. And, you know, to, to the point that I think you're, you're making, it's, well, it's and, the and expenditure side versus the net right, side. Right, because the, net, the, the uh, revenue side is a real problem. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and, and it's out of the school's control uh, 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 in virtually all cases other than modest speed. So, and, and we are in this together, and I don't see that as schools lost revenue. I see it as town of Scarborough's lost revenue. But, but even so, Phil, it's, it's a 9.27% increase. 4% of that has to do with the lost funding from the state and debt service. That still leaves a difference between 9.2% increase and 4%. See, yeah, I, I, if I were doing it, if I were king, <laughs> I, 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 would, I, I would show, <laughs> when you lose revenue, you don't show it as necessarily attributable to school versus town, because I do think that uh, it's, it's not fair to uh, judge the town and the, the school based on uh, factors that are outside their control. A 4.5 cost increase, uh, I think, given what I now understand are significant increases in the special ed budget uh, uh, and the tech support that if you're going to have a one-to-one -one computing, which I support, and I support the modifications that the uh, school board has, uh, has brought forward on that, then you've got to have the right people to run it. I think that's just, that's continuing to meet what you've got. And so when you add all those up, 4.5 is not a, a tremendous increase. So, um, to the primary, to the uh, amendment itself that is being discussed, which is a 500000 the conversation started out as an issue of use of funds, and we've gotten into a decrease in services and a reduction in expenses. So it's a very different um, question and very different response regarding that. Um, looking at the trend of the, the schools, so back to, um, I'm going to base it on the original statement, which was about the use of fund balance. Um, the last three years, and even if you look at the last five, in which they've had, um, at least two years ago, they had a deficit um, in the school and, and it required a use. Um, and, you know, other than one year in 2013, had the surplus on the school side been greater than $500,000. Um, so I think that a use of, uh, at least from an argument or a theoretical perspective, the use of their fund balance of $500,000, one, is not supported by the actual fund balance report that we received from Ruth, it says that um, if I did the math correctly, uh, net the $225,000 that they're going to be receiving, if I take that out, the actual fund balance after the adjustments that are made, it's about $300,000. So you, uh, based on the argument that we want them to use more fund balance, $500,000 is greater than that. Um, I would actually consider using a little bit more, of, of my recommendation is to reduce their budget by a little bit more. Um, I think that uh, the original, uh, the first amendment that passed um, technically could be a use of the fund balance, that $90,000 if they wanted to do that. So it really brings them down to $200,000 um, based upon your original motion, right? Because they don't have to cut the service, they can just use the fund balance. May I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, are you saying that we would keep our budget at 
the original level and then apply more revenue to make the net lower? Because if we don't have authority to spend the $500,000, it doesn't matter how much fund balance we have. Right. So in my understanding of um, our protocol is that we approve the net budget. If we make a, an adjustment of that budget, if you decide to use your fund balance to cover that adjustment, because we're not, we're not telling you which items to cut from the budget, I, it's my understanding that you can do that. Is that not correct? Is that true, um, Tom? Or is it the actual approved? expenditure budget amount well, that's set by the council? Certainly the voters approve the actual expenditure. Right. Um, and I believe the council approves both gross and net um, uh, sides of it. I mean, that's, it's that detailed in your, bud in your budget order. So I guess my uh, point would be I that if, if we are to make use of fund balance, then the changes that are made to the budget should leave that hole on the expenditure side so that right. that's what goes to the voters. Sure. So I will uh, retract that part of my statement because for the clarification, so thank you. Um, so I don't disagree with um, asking them to use more of their fund balance, regardless of the prior statement. Um, I just don't agree with using five, or, um, suggesting $500,000 when they don't have $500,000 in their fund balance to use. Um, and while um, I think it is a little bit um, challenging to try to predict what actually is going to be their deficit or their surplus for this particular year, just as difficult it is on the town side in which we didn't have that conversation. So um, for the $500,000, I'm going to vote against that. Um, I would ask maybe for consideration that we do use um, a little bit more of their fund balance, um, if I understand that correctly, uh, but not the 500000 And I'll leave, um, I'll save my comments on the expense side for the main motion. But any, with those comments, anything else that you wanted to add? <laughs> I'm kind of confused now on where we are. So, so, this, so the motion, yeah, so the motion. The what motion is on in play with your modifications? So, uh, so the only motion, the amendment, is to adjust their budget by five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Which has been seconded. So that's the question that we're voting on. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Bill? No. Okay. Um, all in favor of um, the amendment? All opposed? Three to one. Um, so I, I will make a um, motion to, be, if I understand, um, before we get into the, the conversation we just had. I actually want to, uh, before I forget, I want to ask about, um, we need to make a motion to adjust their budget by the $225,000 discussion that we had on the municipal side. Is that correct? As I understand the action you took regarding fund balance, um, you put it on the town side. It was the town using it. And then what will happen is that in discussing the line item pieces, that will become a new line item piece that's in there, correct? Correct. Yes. I so, so our revenues will increase from the 16,000 to 69 reduction by 225 so. Yeah, so uh, there, yes. So that and, and there and nothing will, and, and there's nothing so far on there. All right, so, so there's nothing so far. So that based on the prior conversation, we need to make an adjustment to the school budget to balance that transaction. Is that correct? No, you've already, uh, you as a committee have already used what, at least I recommend, the most you use. You chose to allocate it to the, the town, town side. You either have if to unallocate it to the town and allocate it to the school. You have to do it as well. Oh, so it's just an accounting transaction? Well, it's got to be approved by the, the board. I can't do it unless. Yeah, use oh, of okay, fund, actually, fund balance is a revenue, so right. it reduces the net request. So, so we just need direction as to on which side for internal accounting does that revenue appear? So Town or school? The motion be in order to uh, increase the use of fund balance uh, in the revenue side of the school budget by 225000 and reduce uh, uh, revenue on the town side of the budget by $225,000. Yeah. Do you it want would, to make that a motion? It would reverse to your decision exactly. 40 minutes ago. Right, and it would put it where I, where I think it should go. So there's a main motion pending. Is it, uh, I might suggest it may not be the right time to offer that because you're dealing yeah, with the I'm expenditure gonna, side? Yeah. If you could run through and exhaust the expenditure reduction, the reductions, that might make more sense just to be cleaner. Good. Sure. So, um, the, well, so the main, uh, the main motion is a net budget less any capital improvements. Okay. 
and takes into consideration revenues and expenditures. And, and less. Uh, so we now have to this plan. I thought that failed, though. Did that fail? Did that pass? No, two to one passed. No, yes, it did. Two to one. Oh, okay. And the five hundred thousand dollar adjustment did not. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. So, Tom, based on the first conversation, the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on the municipal side, we did not pass that on that side. We left it. Is that correct? It's in there, right? It, it's it's reducing the net budget of the town. Of the town right. by two hundred twenty-five. Yeah. It's, it's a revenue to the town. Okay. Right. And that was done by motion forty minutes ago. Right. So, yeah. So, um, the, the question is: There any other amendments on this particular report? Whether it's expenses or the expense side? Yeah. I thought you we talked about 500, which didn't go. But you were going to propose. You had some other number. Others? You had another number. You that you were going to. Um, I think that um, you were talking about the fund balance, the actual fund yeah. balance, uh, not a uh, revenue uh, not a cost side issue. Correct. It was a revenue side. Um, so um, I think I'm going to. Uh, if you, if the two of you would like to make a motion, I think I'm going to leave it alone for now and reserve that question. I, I need to. Um, I'm trying to kind of keep the path going, and I'm getting myself confused about where I really personally have an opinion on, and I might reserve that for uh, the full council conversation. Um, unless you two would like, any one of you would like to bring that up. No. Um, so. Um, moving away from the revenue or use of funds um, on the expense side, are there any other conversations or, or discussions on the expense side, Pete? Yep. Peter, anything from you? I mean, we could. I guess where I was. I mean, you, you, you guys have voted down some adjustments to the expense side. I still believe there needs to be some from this to pass on our recommendation. So. I don't know what the form of the motion is. We could keep trying to pick a number. Right. I don't know if there's any energy for that conversation or not. I think there's some number. And I guess that would be the form of the motion. Do you, you know, is there more discussion we want to have on the expenditure side reduction? Yes or no? And then we could go from there. So uh, for purposes of this, um, I'm comfortable with the expenses that have been proposed. Um, I looked at really, I tried to look at more of the higher level perspective of that. And really, in the 3.4, and I'm rounding numbers, $3.4 million net increase in their budget. Um, if, I, if I look at the numbers, uh, between state mandates and the reduction in, in funding, that accounts for about $2.3 million. $900,000 is contractual obligations uh, um, that are payroll and benefits required. That is, that is the increase. Um, unless we want to really gut um, educational services, which I don't want to do, and we'll never um, agree with that, um, the $500,000 that we discussed before would significantly reduce educational services. And I don't think this community is prepared for that, nor should we do that, especially as we're talking about um, increased value in our, in our community um, at all levels and not just schools, but also in other areas. It's becoming, you know, serving on SEDCO, we hear constantly, as a liaison, I hear constantly about the increasing value of the community, more and more businesses wanting to come here. And, you know, I believe, and I'm paraphrasing the quote, but Sun Financial's uh, executive personally stated that the value of this community, the services that it's provide um, to, its, um, to its employees, who hopefully will live here, is a, was a significant, um, uh, decision as why to relocate here. So I think that this is a fair budget. Um, you know, in good times, um, I think that um, whether it's reasonable or not is judgmental, but I think that we're in very unreasonable times. Um, the significant reduction from the state, um, the state mandates alone are an incredible burden. Um, and we need to be able to at least level those services, like Bill has argued, and I know other companies at least have offered to me. So I'm at least comfortable moving it out of our committee to the full council and then listening to the other four members of the council of what their position is and, and then balancing it at that particular point. Um, I will state that I probably will not, personally, even at the council level, um, I would not suggest um, supporting a significant reduction in the school's budget at this particular time. So, so 
I, I agree with your position, and I, uh, uh, I previously expressed how I arrived at where I am with this, and the motion as pending has it at the point that I'm comfortable. So, so the motion is just <coughs> headed formally two to one. <laughs> so Informally, as far so we still have to know further. Yes, yeah. so I just, just record that. Yeah. yeah. So we still have to vote on the. Uh, the, the main motion, which is the 39-172-589, less than 90,092, whatever that number now is. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the question on the floor for us to vote on. So all those in favor of that new number? Two, and all opposed? One. Did you intend that to include capital? No, so that's that the next part. Capital. Okay. That excludes it purposely. Yep. So I'll make a motion that, um, understanding that it's the net number, so it's the total expenditures less the revenue education bonds that the um, move approval of a net capital improvement budget of $348,728. Is there a second? Second. And for purposes of um, discussion, uh, I would move that we amend that amount by the $75,000 that Peter discussed earlier, um, or Peter and Kate uh, presented to us. Um, so that would be actually a, it's a reduction, decrease. Um, I think for purposes of the school CIP, if you wanted to reduce that, you probably should take them separately because the net effect of the... Because of the bonds. Right. It's all, yes. it's, it's, it's all bonded. No, it isn't. Never mind. Ignore what I just okay. said. Okay. Thank you. You're right. Should that be reduced? So, I'll, I'll second that motion. Sure. Um, Chris, yeah. would you be able to speak a little bit about the fact that that three... 48728 is a tax impact and not a bond impact? Correct, but I think... Because that might be a little bit confusing on the next slide. If I'm looking at the 75... I lost it. Where's the 75,000? Is that the MLTI annual lease yeah. for sixth grade devices? Yeah. Yeah. We have planned to appropriate that money in, C in the capital. That was going to be an appropriated amount. So... If they're really looking to reduce the uh, capital improvement budget, it would be the one million four one three four fifty one. Yeah, that's why. That's what I started are, to say. There are pieces in the net that they are should. bonded and pieces that are appropriated. So, so let me back up. In, in the uh, page two of the initial document, sure. are um, on the school side were revenue adjustments for CIP and revenue expenditure budget adjustments for CIP. So um, if you took them individually, you would see one-to-one -one computing, which was budgeted at around 866000 The school finance committee reduced that by 117. So right now they're at 748. We are still at the 866. But so, the, so, so we would need to amend the down, down, no. no. But then on the, if you look at the top of that page, they had uh, bonded monies of $1.1 mm -hmm. The change to their one-to-one -one was also going to be bonded, so we want to reduce the amount we're going to bond for them. So net, there's no change on, on these two pieces for the one-to-one -one computing, because it was appropriated, it was going to be bonded, no net tax effect. But we still need to vote, I think, sure. to show that. The 75000 if you want to reduce their, their appropriation, uh, we have to do that as a, an expenditure adjustment down, and that will affect sure. the, the net. So if it's okay with... Uh Bill, I'm going to withdraw the motion and take the expenditure and then the revenue piece separately, if that's okay. Yeah. Does that help? So I move approval of um, capital improvement project budget for the school of $1,413,451. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So I would then amend that motion to reduce their budget by $75,000, consistent with the conversation that held previously. Okay. Yep, the second MLT I at least. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. um, any other comments on that particular item? No. No. Um, all in favor? Three. Opposed. Thank you. Um, any other adjustments to the capital improvement budget expenditure line? Or uh, any other recommendations for consideration? The group brought to uh, our attention that the uh, capital budget number for the one-to-one -one computing has uh, been reduced to the 
process, okay. the school board process. Right, but you still have to vote. Yep. Right. Is, that what you, no. is that what their amendment just was? I don't think you have to because it's already considered in that one million four. It was okay. our, the effect of which was already was already considered. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments on the capital improvement budget? Uh, so that would be one million four thirteen four fifty one minus the seventy five. I don't have a calculator. It's a small number, so I'm not going to calculate it. But I'm going to trust Ruth. Um, all in favor? Oh, we already actually. Sorry, we already voted. Yeah, no, we did the amendment. So all in favor of the new number? Yep. Yeah. All opposed. <laughs> well, yeah, so the main motion was 1,413,000. Right, and you took 75. And we've taken the 75, yeah. so the main motion is now as adjusted. Okay. As adjusted. Yeah. We will yeah. calculate based yeah. on that yeah. change yeah. And, yeah. and produce the new yeah. sheets. So um, the main motion passes. So the other piece is now to approve the uh, revenue side, the revenue educational bonds. Having that clarification that Bill asked, I don't see any need to adjust that, right, because it was already taken into consideration. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I think it is because they removed the net amount, yeah. which already took into consideration. But they, they're voting on the gross, not the net. They voted on the, the million four. That's on the expense side. And, and right now, the budget for estimated revenues is a million one eighty two. But what's on here takes into account the reduction to the bond proceeds. Right. But you haven't voted on. We're doing that now. That's yeah, why okay. we just yeah. asked it. So the yeah. million one sixty four. So I'm going to move approval of the revenue line, a million sixty a million uh, sixty four. Is that two twenty seven twenty three, which takes into consideration the adjustment. Is there a second? Doing good. Any other comments, questions, or recommendations on that line? Not having any. Uh, all in favor? Three. None opposed. So. Um, just for clarification, the net budget now for the CIP is 348728 minus $75,000. Okay? I just want to make sure we all are on the same page with that. Any other um, items regarding the budget? Uh, not seeing any. Uh, we've already kind of uh, discussed, at least uh, on the school side, as well as the town to some extent, the use of fund balance. I'm going to reserve any uh, questions uh, regarding uh, or comments about the uh, or recommendations on the my comments previously for the full council. Um, at this particular point, it's now open for public comment. If anybody would like to get up and speak, we're happy to uh, go to the, go to the stand. Come on once, twice. Thank you, everyone. Um, I did want to make, uh, before we adjourn, I did want to uh, make you aware that we have received our April financial statements. So we're not going to bring that up today. Um, and uh, it gives us actually a little bit of time before our next, uh, we'll have to talk about our next finance committee meeting. This will be a, um, we'll wait on the agenda because we'll have to see what happens with tonight's workshop as well as uh, uh, the vote on May 20th. Uh, but uh, I want to look at that and come up with recommendations. Oh, excuse me. I had made a promise and I didn't follow through. So um, we had or we had talked about the finance committee motion to approve on April 29th with the line item pieces. We said that we were going to approve that in the committee so that it provides line item detail. Right, Tom? Uh, yeah, I don't uh, think you need to. Uh, you okay we, you, you've made the aggregate changes. We understand that's where it comes from. And okay. uh, I think we're fine. You okay with that? Yeah. Great. Um, not seeing any other items. Any comments? Um, given that this is our final, I just want to say to you know to the town now is um, Ruth. You, know, you always amaze me. You're doing a great job. You and staff and everyone um, and sharing information. Tom, I appreciate the process and all the managers. This has probably um, changed the format in which we the, the budgets were presented for each of the departments. They gave a, a significant and more qualitative understanding of what those services are and where the increases are. So I, I do want to say thank you, and um, especially now with all of us here, uh, I really do believe the greatest success, if anything, this year has been setting into place a uh, framework for future public uh, budget forums um, that set the standard and that we can only improve upon. So I, I want to thank everyone, including the citizens that came out. Um, it's been very informative. With that in mind, uh, I'll accept the motion to return. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. See you at 7 o'clock.
Thank you, Tom. Yeah, sorry. It was